Uh, you have the AC machines, you get the DC machines, and AC-DC machines. And well, I am still a small enough YouTuber that I don't have really expensive welding machines. So with the majority of the nicer machines that can switch between AC and DC, there are some extra features like hot start and dig and some of these, you know, features that may make your stick life, your stick life a little easier. But I don't think that those machines are worth it for that extra cost. Now, what I would say is if you do want to get a nicer machine, well, just pick up a really nice TIG machine, and that's because all TIG machines can stick weld. And if you do just want to stick two pieces of metal together, well, go find one in your grandpa's garage, uh, pick up one on Yes Welder, or a cheap $100 one off of Amazon. Next up is rods. And now the very common steel rods are categorized with a four-digit number. And the first two digits for that is a number that is in kips that tells you the tensile strength in PSI. And who cares about any of that, right? Well, in short, you either get a 60,000 PSI or a 70,000 PSI strength, tensile strength rod. And come on, let's get real. I mean, you're probably like me in your garage just trying to do a little project here and there, and the difference between the 60 and 70 isn't gonna matter. The third number is the position you can weld in. And what does that mean? Well, if it's a one, it means you can weld in any position. And that means you can do it a horizontal flat, you can do weld on a vertical position or overhead. Versus a number two uh, designates, designates that it could only be a flat horizontal surface. And most of the rods you pick up and the very common ones in the store are just a one, so it can do all positions. So pick up a one and you'll be good. That fourth digit, well, that is the composition of the flux around your rod. And hopefully you have seen or know enough about stick welding that know that you know that you can't just weld with a straight up rod. Uh, yeah, the flux is what protects your weld while it's solidifying. And so that composition, it, it, there's a lot of different things. Uh, yeah, as you can see, there's, there's lots of different colors and they all have their different purposes for what they do. Like just for example, like a 6010, 6011, that is kind of a fast freeze. It's, it's the rod helps it just kind of solidify that much quicker. And so you can actually see that in the weld, it has some higher peaks and everything. Versus, you know, a 7018, um, um, it's more of a fluid or soft weld. As I don't know if those are all the correct terms, but you can actually see that it is a nice, more consistent or flatter weld. Um, I like it because it looks prettier. Now, the last thing you need to know about rods are different sizes. So the four digit number, all of those come in different diameters of rods. For example, you got a 1 16th, a 3 32nd, a 1 8th, or even a 5 32nd, which I hardly ever use. So that's probably why the box is totally full. But what those do is they allow you to do thinner material with lower amperage, um, and then work your way up. And if you find yourself in a store and just have no clue what to get, well, I would stick with either a 6013, 6011, or 7018, 332nd inch rod. Either of those three will probably get you through a majority of any of the projects you have lined up. Now off the bat, if you have a machine that you can switch the polarity, well, typically I do DCEP, which is direct current electrode positive. So that's how I'm gonna hook it up right now. But I mean, by all means, if you got a rod that can do either or, switch it around and see which lays a better bead for you. Now, striking an arc is actually one of the hardest things as you're just starting out stick welding. So here's a couple tricks that I've learned along the way. First of all, have a nice clean um, surface free of rust or mill scale. I did mention that stick welding is really good to go through rust, but if you're trying to strike an arc, make sure you guys or see some bare metal, and that goes for your ground clamp as well. You don't want to try to be going through stuff. Keep the actual uh, exposed rod in the holder. Don't clamp down on the flux. I hope that makes sense. You're not going to get a good connection, or you're not going to get any connection at all for that. Uh, for what that's worth. This is a very typical electro holder. Um, this next step is all personal preference. Some people actually like to angle it down. It kind of gives them a little more room as they're moving down the bead. Some people angle it up. This might be more so uh, depending on the situation you're in, if you're doing some overhead stuff underneath a trailer, what have you. Um, for this flat surface, I typically just go out of 90 and keep it at that. 
Don't forget you could go straight out, which nobody does. Make sure that the amps are set hot enough to actually strike an arc. That is one of the things that sometimes the amps will be set too low and it's not enough amperage to even get the arc going for the size rod that you're using. If you've started and stopped a couple times, you'll actually notice that the rod gets kind of sucked in or it's kind of concave with the flux. And so, as you can imagine, as you're tapping or hitting, you're just hitting the flux, not the actual rod. Uh, so some people actually just tap or knock that off. Uh, others use a file and actually grind it. I've actually done it all, but the easiest is actually to grab the end with your ground clip. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't do that, as you can imagine why you're gonna create the circuit. So, like I said, just grab a little fire file or something or knock it off just so then you can see the rod on the end. Now you'll notice that it's actually kind of hard to tack in place with a full length rod and that's because no matter how stable your hand is, you're out here 12, 15 inches, it's a little shaky out here. What I usually do is I'll hold it in place um, or I'll even hold it in the end and I'll tack. And I'll start my weld and then once I eat up uh, some of the weld or once I eat up some of the rod then I can uh, let go but if you want a great tip for tacking things in place that would be save some of the rod ends you'll notice as you start welding projects you'll always have a little bit left well all I can say is go out and try it and then come back comment and just tell me how much easier it was to do a short tack Use both of your hands as a stabilizer to keep that hand from shaking as much as it could. So once you get that arc going, just remember you want to pull it or drag. Don't push that weld. And practice. I mean, grab a whole bunch of pieces of scrap metal and just throw down some beads. I think I've probably laid about four or five beads over top of each other. That doesn't matter because I'm just practicing striking the arc. So go out, have fun with it, and I mean, well, hopefully this video gave you some good basic tips and tricks to help you along, and that's all I got. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.